I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. This statement surprised everybody because it seemed to break a pattern. Read the Constitution and the presidency seems a limited office. Look at history and you'll see criticism of men who use that office to increase and expand their power. In 1940, Franklin Roosevelt did the unthinkable. He ran for a third term. Opponents, even in his own party, called him mockingly the indispensable man. Caesarism became a byword in the 1950s as the power and scope of the presidency enlarged. Protect and defend. Dwight Eisenhower used the CIA to fight wars covertly without the approval of Congress or the public. Richard Nixon was called an imperial president after the excesses of the Vietnam War and Watergate. Nixon, in turn, claimed the rights of executive privilege put him above questioning by Congress and the public. President Reagan shipped arms to insurgents in Nicaragua in violation of a congressional amendment. President Reagan also defied Congress at home through the theory of the unitary executive, which said the president, as the head of that branch, should be able to staff positions with whomever he liked without oversight from Congress. Today we take an essential step in defeating terrorism. President George W. Bush revived the doctrine of the unitary executive when he expanded the war on terror, centering more and more of it within the executive branch. The Syrian government was responsible for this attack on its own people. Mr. Obama seems willing to give up some of that power, but so far he has relinquished nothing. I believe I have the authority to carry out this military action without specific congressional authorization.